guys, I'm Chef Pam. Welcome back to my kitchen. This is Chef and More, and today we are getting ready to make rigatoni pasta pie. It's a cheesy, cheesy pie, guys. We're going to be using my favorite spring form pan again, guys. And as you can see, I've already got my water going on over there. So let's get in the kitchen and get busy. So I think, I think, I have all of my ingredients out here. You guys know me, I'm always running back to the cabinets and covered for something. But we have our rigatoni pasta. And you'll need this because as you can see how it's shaped, it'll need to stand up in your spring form pan. And then we have Parmesan cheese, shredded mozzarella cheese, our pan. This is a spring form pan, guys. It's the kind that comes loose so that you can take the sides off of your uh, pan and still have your dish. And guys, anybody that wants a pan like this, I have a link down in the description for the one that I use. And don't forget um, that you can, you can always use a regular pan but it's easier to get it out with one of these. Then I'm not doing any homemade sauce. I just got some regular old meat pasta sauce and I'm using some regular old diced tomatoes. These actually are flavored with, uh, let's see, garlic and basil and oregano, but you can use the plain ones. I have 80-20 ground beef, guys. You can use ground turkey as well. Or you can leave it out, guys. This can be very vegetarian. You can leave the ground beef out and just do the sauce. And I'm going to be putting in garlic powder, Italian seasoning, and onion powder. And we're going to need a little butter so that we can butter our pan. Okay, guys, I'm going to go over here to the stove and get everything prepped. What we're going to do first, guys, is cook our rigatoni pasta. You want to cook it al dente, just until done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that prep. And I'm also going to go ahead and brown my ground beef. And after I'm all done prepping, we'll be back. Okay guys, while I am prepping everything, I just wanted to come on and say to remember, cook your pasta according to the package directions. You wanna make sure it's al dente, that's just before done. You don't want it cooked all the way completely because you're gonna finish it off in the oven. Also, as I mentioned before, yes, I did forget an ingredient. I always do <laughs> when I'm talking about my ingredients. You're gonna need a little olive oil, guys. Just a bit, just a bit. We're gonna to toss our pasta in it. Now, I know, I know, I know. Most people say don't toss your pasta in olive oil, but in order to make it um, do the right thing in this pan, you're gonna to wanna to toss it, okay? So get a spoonful and toss it, please. Let's get back in the kitchen. Okay, guys, what we're going to do right quick while we're waiting on everything to finish up, our pasta to cool, I'm going to just go ahead and mix my sauce with my diced tomatoes. Nothing fancy at all. I'm going to pour them in here and just get them mixed up. That's all I want to do, guys, is get it mixed up. Get it mixed up. Okay, sit that over there. Let's pop. Let's get this open. Ooh. And pour that right on in. just kind of want to mix it together guys mix it together and you may not need this is a full four cups you may not need the whole four cups you can always put it in a glass jar and keep it for another dish later leftovers yes okay now we're going to sit that aside guys i've got my ground beef here all cooked and i added the italian seasoning and the garlic and the onion to my ground beef as I was browning it. So that's where that came in at. Okay guys, and I need to grab another spoon, so I'll be right back. 
Okay guys, I'm gonna set this aside right quick, but the first thing we want to do is prepare our pan. Now, as you can see, I have my pan sitting inside another pan. That's because, because it does come a loose, there's always the chance that you'll have some sauce or something run out the edge. I can't stand a messy oven. I mean, my oven, I even have the bottom shelf guys lined with foil because no, we're not cleaning that oven up, okay? Not like that. So, all right, anything spills, I can just switch the foil out. All right, guys, so you want softened butter and you want to generously, generously um, put the butter in your pan on the bottom and the side. This will ensure that, um, and you can use olive oil or a spray oil if you want. I like butter because I think it always adds more flavor. Well, olive oil will add flavor too, guys, okay? But I like butter. Everything's better with butter and bacon, at least in my book. All right, guys, let's get this all buttered up here. Let's get it buttered, let's get it buttered. No rhyme, no reason, just get her done. Okay, guys, as you can see, we are done with that. So, let's clean our hands and we'll be right back. Okay, set this aside and on to our pasta. As you can see, it's nicely cooked and I'm just going to take the olive oil and put just a little bit on it. So make sure the pieces won't stick together. This is probably about a tablespoon that I'm putting on. You don't need much. Just kind of stir it together, mix it. Whoopsie. Okay, all right, all right, all right, guys. This is a beautiful dish when it comes out, guys. If you're entertaining or something, people think you've been in the kitchen for hours. It's quick and easy. As you see, I haven't used any ingredients that are hard to find or anything like that guys the biggest thing you'll need is this pan you will need this pan to create this you can do it in a regular pan but you have to you the presentation in the end that you'll see will, won't be the same okay so that's pretty good so now this is what you want to do you want to take the rigatoni and we're going to stand each piece up in here. You may not need it all, you may need a little more sometimes, but then you just kind of spread it out so it'll fit. It should stand up, guys, but it doesn't always stand up, but these are standing up right nicely. And as you can see, they are different sizes because you never know what you get when you get in the pan, okay? So I'm going to put these all around the entire pan we're going to sit them like this in front of one another until our whole pan is complete with the rigatoni today. At any rate, let's get busy. So as you can see, it looks good already. This is what it looks like once you have all the rigatoni in the pan. Then the next thing we want to do is go in here. I'm going to turn this this way so I can sit this down a little bit. First thing we're going to do is go in with our sauce. The point of the sauce, you can pour it in, but I kind of like to spoon it in because you want it to go down in the hose. It's going to sink down and in between here. You want it some on the edge, on the outside, on the inside. You want to make sure some of it gets down into all your little holes. And it doesn't really take long, like I said. You can pour it on, especially if you're doing vegetarian. You can really pour it on then because you don't need to, uh, it'll be your top layer. It'll be your top layer, so. Okay, I'm going to get this all spread out here. Okay, now we have our first layer of sauce, so I'm just gonna go in, and I actually had a pound of the ground beef, but I'm gonna be using some from something else. You really don't need all of this. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some, and like I said, guys, if you wanted vegetarian, skip this step, guys. Or you can use ground turkey if you don't want to use beef. You can use pork. You can use just about anything you want up here. You can actually do a, you can actually do also like a, um, oh, what do you call it? What do you call it, what do you call it? Uh, like an Alfredo sauce and chicken. You can do an Alfredo sauce and chicken. I don't know why I couldn't think of that, guys. OMG. All right. So we're gonna finish this up and come back and do our cheese. Okay, so now we're gonna go in again with a little bit more sauce on the top here. You don't need a lot, but you do want some. Do you want some in between this meat and the cheese? 
And the cheese needs to be generous, guys. We're gonna put lots of cheese on top, yes. That should do it. Our mozzarella first, you can do it any way you want. Our cheese is actually frozen. Yes, you can freeze cheese, guys. You can freeze cheese. Okay. Okay guys, we have our rigatoni cheesy pie all made and we're going to go into a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven. And I stress the word Fahrenheit because I realize there are a lot of people that have different ovens and so I want them to know if they need to calculate uh, the time and temperature for their oven. They will know that this recipe has been given on a 375 degree Fahrenheit, okay? What we're going to do now is cover the top of this with foil and bake it for 30 minutes. Then we're gonna take the foil off and continue to bake it for about, oh, 10 or 15 minutes, just until the top browns. Okay, so we're gonna put some foil over the top of this and get it in the oven. You know what guys, just give me one second on this for I'm going to show you a trick. Okay guys, anytime you have to bake something that has cheese on the top, it could be lasagna or anything else, and you need to put foil on it, and you need to put foil on it, let me clean this off right quick. You need to bake something, you need to put a piece of foil on it, you want to take a spray, an olive oil spray or anything and spray the top of it. That will prevent your cheese from sticking to the top when you pull it off. Now it may stick a little bit, but it won't be as bad as if you don't do this. So just lightly spray it and then put it on. That's it guys. Little trick for the day, little trick. Okay, into the oven we go and we'll be back. Okay guys, it is time for us to take the foil off. So I'm gonna try to do this with one hand, so forgive me if it's a little crazy in here. But I just want you guys to see me as I take the foil off because it has to stay, it has to still stay in here. I should have just got my tripod and put it on there, but okay. We will do this with one hand. And yes, it is hot in this oven. But as you can see, my foil is not really sticky. Ah, yes, I want you guys to see that. See what's on the top of my foil? Not very much. Okay, so this is what we look like right now. So we're gonna let the top continue to bake and let that cheese get nice and toasty and brown. All right, guys. Yeah. All right, we're out of the oven. Let it cool before you take that rim off. <clears throat> so, you go, guys, no. I like to decorate, so we're just going to put a few pieces of fresh chopped parsley on the top. Can't help it, I can't help it, I can't help it. Yes, awesome and amazing. Yes. Sprinkle a few here and there. Okay, guys. All right, all right, all right, guys. Let's see if I can bring this in for a close-up. Doesn't that look delicious, guys? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, guys, I hope we are cool enough. You can never tell, but we are going to try to take this off. And as you guys can see, it leaked a little bit outside. That's why I had that other pan in there. Okay. So fasten it. See if we can reveal the insides. Is it cooling up, guys? this way a little bit so pop it open 
Ooh. Or I could pop open there. Okay, let's see. It's still really hot. Okay. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Ooh, let me see, let me see. Okay, let me see here. Go around the edge a little bit here. Okay. That cheese stuck to the top a little bit there. Okay, but the end products to still be amazing. Okay. Okay, still over here. It's kind of like a cake, guys. Sometimes you gotta get all the way down in there. Okay. Actually, I think it was stuck to the bottom rim more than the actual thing. Okay. Awesome. Isn't that amazing, guys? Isn't that amazing? Okay, let's see if I can lift this up so you guys can get a closer look. Alright guys, look at that. Look at that all the way around. See the sauce? See the sauce guys? Oh! Okay guys, we are all done. And for presentation's sake, I am not going to actually do a taste test this time because this is for later. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe guys and tap the bell so you'll always get my videos when I upload them guys. Be the first to get the recipe and try it out. Tap the bell. Give me a thumbs up, guys. Leave me some comments. You think you're going to try this? Come on, guys. Leave those comments. Share it out. Share it out. Share it out. You know what I always say, guys. Sharing is caring. I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. The good Lord will and the creek don't rise.